Uncle Scooty, um, co-founder of Rock Creek Social Club, a uh, partner with uh, Premium Co. Men's Red Line. So Rock Creek Social Club started in 2010. It was the brainchild of my uh, business partner, Jerome Baker. Um, there was a void in, in, in D.C. for like the cool kids where we felt like there was a lack of creative events. There was a lack of places where like-minded individuals could come together and kind of like share ideas and, and, and build off of one another. So the partnership with Premium, like that's like a crazy, crazy, crazy story. Um, so my business partner with Rock Creek Social Club, Jerome, had a, um, a relationship with another DJ out of New York who owns a store in Vegas, um, DJ Crooked. And Jerome would always come with like these really dope clothes. And I'm like, man, where'd you get those clothes from? He's like, oh, that's my boy at Crooked's uh, shop in Vegas, new. So he's like, man, you gotta follow him on the gram. So I started following them and, um, and I started noticing some of the stuff that they had. And this one company, Premium, had put up uh, these braces, these snakeskin braces that I was like really into it at the time. And I was like, yo, this shit is like super dope. So I was like, man, I'm, I'm, you know, I'll start following them. So I started commenting on the pictures like, yo, this is dope. Like I like this or I don't like this or whatever the case may be. And then the person who was running it, who is now my business partner, Davin, he would respond, which was crazy to me because, you know, most companies that I had ever reached out to, like nobody ever responded or anytime I commented, nobody would ever say anything back. And then right around the time when we were doing the first Broccoli City Fest, um, I didn't know that he had like a really close relationship with uh, Phil Ade, who was like a little brother to me. And he posted the, the flyer to the Broccoli City Fest. So when I saw it, I was like, what the hell? I was like, yo, I hit him up. I'm like, yo, like this is my festival. Like I'm hosting this joint. And like we had the whole you know thing about him and Phil being cool or whatever. So we ended up meeting and you know, I, I was like, you know, anything I could do to help. But then it just became like a thing where you know, like my relationships and my network were, were a lot bigger than marketing and sales. And it became like a thing where because premium was transitioning into like kind of like a new phase of the company, it was almost like, you know, like, I, like we started something, we're starting something together. It's like we're starting a new chapter together. Um, and then, you know, just, just became, ended up becoming a partner. So started off, you know what I'm saying, like one thing and then ended up being something else. So with Rock Creek, you know what I'm saying, like not even gonna lie, you know what I'm saying, like I, I realistically, like I, I joined on, you know, cause I thought it was like a dope idea. You know what I mean? Like I've always been like a super popular person, you know what I'm saying, in the city and I've never had issues with getting in places or, or any of that, that type of thing. But it's like, you know, when it came to like my friends, you know, like people would look down on them like, oh yeah, we got you, but like, they got pay or whatever the case may be or no, they can't get in. And that was always a problem for me. And you know, when I started like really like researching and like, not even researching, but like really started to pay close attention to like the whole like DC like scene, it was just a lot of stuff that I just didn't necessarily agree with. Um, it's almost like, you know saying, like modern day, like segregation, you know, like, so, you know, like with Rock Creek, it was like, it was about giving, you know what I'm saying, like everybody a platform and, and everybody, you know what I'm saying, like an opportunity to like enjoy themselves, whether we're doing parties, whether we're doing events, you know, it's also, you know, putting us in a position where we're kind of like gatekeepers, where we have influence here and there are other people that want to come here and do dope stuff, you know what I mean, like that gives them an opportunity to collaborate with us and it gives us an opportunity to reach out to other people and say, hey, you know what I'm saying, like here's an opportunity, like how do you feel about this? I'll be honest with you and say, like, you know, like, I don't, I don't even have a real goal. You know, I know I should have one, and, and, and people always ask me. My goal every day is just to wake up and just do cool shit, and that's it. You know what I mean? Like, being an entrepreneur is, like, it's, it's, it's freedom. You know what I mean? Like, I could wake up every day. I could do, I could do whatever I want. You know, like, one day it's Rock Creek, you know. The next day it's, it's premium, um, you know. The next day after that, like I'm helping somebody else with their pop up, or I'm helping somebody else with their clothing line, or, or you know, or this Broccoli City Fest, and you know, there are all these different things. Like I don't limit myself to anything. Like there's no real goal other than to every day just wake up, be happy, and just do dope shit. You know that that's going to inspire somebody else. Like that's it. That's the goal every day. 
So it's not a year, two years, it's every single day. Three things. One, um, I stole this one from, from 40 Ounce Van. Like that's that's my homie. Um, he's like one of like the like the cool like he's one of like the coolest people I know like influencer wise. You know what I'm saying? Always keeps it a hundred. But at one point in time, like he put up this post on Twitter, it was like, you know, like show love to everybody, like, you know, little homies become big homies. And that like resonated with like everything. It's like, you know, always show love and show respect to everybody because, you know, in the club, busboys become, you know, bartenders, bartenders become managers, managers become owners. You know, everybody has somewhere that they gotta start from. So, you know, like always show them love and always show them respect and then, you know, eventually like they'll come back into your to your life and they'll be at a point, you know, saying like where well, they might be the person to like help you out. Um so that's one. Always show love and respect to everybody. Um one that's like, you know, like a common thing, you know, kinda cliche, like your your net worth is your net worth. It is. You know what I mean? Um most things, you know, that happen in life, they happen through um, relationships, you know. Like, people always say, you know what I'm saying, like, oh, it, it, you know, it ain't about, you know what I'm saying, like, it ain't about who you know, it's about what you know. No, it's about who you know, then it goes back to to what you know. You know what I mean? Like, people are going to, people, it, you can you can be, have 7, 8, 10, 20 degrees or whatever, right? But it's always that one person, you know what I'm saying, like that has to make a decision of whether they're gonna let you in the door or not let you in the door. You know, but if you do all those things and you build that network and you know that person that that's at that door, then you'll get access. But then it always falls back to like, well, what do you know? Because a lot of times, you know, in our society, people are looking like for that finesse. Everybody wanna get finesse, like, oh, I don't have to do this, I can just call this person or whatever. And that's cool. But then once you get that access or you get that opportunity, like, like, are you preparing yourself to take advantage of that opportunity? Like, are you are you ready to, to do the work? Like, that's like the biggest question. So, you know, like, your, your network is always gonna be your net worth. And then, you know, like once you have that network, it's, it's about, you know, being able to take advantage of those opportunities because they will be there. Um, and then I think like the last thing is, One thing that like sits, sits with me all the time and, 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 and I always do, and it, it might not work for everybody, but you know, a lot of times I feel like, you know, us as people, like we set the bar like too high for ourselves and, or we get frustrated or we get um, discouraged because, you know, like we don't know what we want to do, you know, like just like I said, like what's, like what's your goal, you know what I mean? Like I don't, I'm like, oh, I don't have one. I just know I just want to do dope shit. Um, you know, a lot of people are like that, and a lot of people, they kind of like, they fail because they set the bar so high, when you don't reach it, you get discouraged, you fall off, you decide, man, I don't wanna do that shit no more, I'm about to just do this, do whatever. So I live my life by the opposite. Even when I don't know what I wanna do, I always know what I don't wanna do. And as long as I keep the bar below me and I never fall below that, I know that every day I wake up, there's always opportunity for me to do something better. 